VoiceThread is a great tool for faculty and students to use to create presentations online. While VoiceThread has a lot of different capabilities, such as threaded discussions, the ability to add video and files, and the ability to record a full screen video, we're not going to cover that in this particular tutorial. This tutorial is geared strictly around how to get started and use the basics of VoiceThread. So for all of our CFC folks, we're going to get to VoiceThread through our OAKS integration. If you're not with the College of Charleston, you'll go to VoiceThread.com and sign up for a free account. All right, I'm going to go into one of my classes inside OAKS. And over here on the right hand side under Multimedia Resources says Access VoiceThread for this course. This is how all CFC faculty and students can get to VoiceThread. And when I click on it, it will automatically create an account for me if I don't already have one. So I don't need to worry about logging in or which, my, which username and password I'm using. All right, so when you come in, you sort of see a blank screen, and that can be a little bit daunting. But let's take a look around VoiceThread just so that you see what we have. If I click on Home, the Home area shows me all of the videos that either I have created or someone else has shared with me. You'll also notice this little tab here on the left-hand side, and if I click that, it will show me all of the classes that I have available. Now, a new class will be automatically created as soon as you click on that link from Inside Oaks. But you can also create your own groups if you want, but that's more of an advanced feature and beyond the scope of today's tutorial. If you go to Browse, Browse allows you to see all voice threads created by anybody in the world that has made them public. So you can go in and see what, if, what other people are doing with VoiceThread and you can search them. But where we really want to spend our time today is in this third button in the Create area. And that's obviously where you're going to create a new VoiceThread. All right, so VoiceThread uses three steps, three easy steps. First is Create, second is Comment, and third is Share. And it's really, truly that easy. So first of all, we're going to add content. And since I am doing a presentation slash lecture, what I'm going to add is my PowerPoint slides. You can add them one of two ways. Let me scooch my window over here a little bit so that you can see this. Here's my PowerPoint presentation. I'm just going to drag this PowerPoint over here where it says drag and drop. Now it's asking me for a title for my voice thread, so I'm going to call it Assessment Lecture. You don't have to give it a description and you don't have to give it a tag, but it's helpful if you decide to do that. And then I'm just going to hit Save. All right, so as you can see, each slide in my PowerPoint presentation now has become its own slide within VoiceThread. And this is really handy because what I'm going to do next is do my commenting on a per, per slide basis. This is great because a lot of times when you're using screen capture software or you're making a video, you're sort of required to talk nonstop all the way through your lecture. This way I get to record my voice over each slide individually. Later, let's say two semesters from now, I need to change this slide all I need to do is put in a new picture and re-record my voice for just the one slide and I can continue to reuse the entire presentation and not have to re-record the whole thing. Likewise, if next semester I decide that I didn't really like the order that I had this presentation in, I can always just grab these and reorder them. So I'll put the um, roots of liberalism before revolutionary ideas. So you'll see that you can rearrange them by just dragging and moving them. So all I'm doing is using my mouse, clicking and holding my mouse down while I drag it left or right to its new location. And then I let go. If I choose to delete a slide that I don't like, all I need to do is mouse over it and just click on the trash can and that will delete the slide and all the comments on the deleted slide as well. All right, I'm going to hit cancel though on that. 
So all I've done is I've added a PowerPoint presentation and I've given this a title. Now what I'm going to do is add my voice to each of these slides. And I'm going to do that through the comment tool. And I know that sounds a little counterintuitive, but it is truly me as the professor and the owner of the presentation commenting on each slide. So we'll just come up here after we have them in the proper order and I'm going to click comment. So here's step one. Step two is comment. And there's my slide. Now there's multiple ways that I can add comments, but the most common is a strictly voice commentary. So when I come up to this area and I'm going to mouse over this little plus, if you don't see it, just mouse to the bottom of the screen and it'll pop up. And you'll see that I have the choice of a text-based comment, an audio comment, a video comment, and then I can even upload a comment. Now all of these features are available to your student as well with the exception of the uploading comment and that's because they don't have a pro account like you do as faculty. But all I'm going to do is come into this area and choose the little microphone. Now the first time I do this, Flash has to know that I have a microphone on my computer, so it's just asking for permission and I'm going to choose Allow. So now that my countdown is over, I'm going to begin talking about what this slide is about. So this is the introduction to the French Revolution, and we're going to talk about key concepts. Now, while I'm on this screen, I want you to notice a few things. When I'm done, I'll click Stop Recording. But you'll also notice that I have this little pencil tool. And if I click on that pencil tool, I can have multiple colors and you'll see this word fade and I'll check it in a minute and we'll show the other option. So what's going to happen is let's say I choose purple and while I'm talking about the French Revolution I'm going to say so what happened is we had this group over here and we had this group over here and there was just a few people in the middle that sort of agreed with both sides but most of the time it was you know blah blah was over here and blah blah was over here. So as I'm talking, I can draw using my mouse. And all I've done is click that pencil and come up here and draw. But as I talk, you'll notice that the, pen, the pencil coloring is actually disappearing. Sometimes that's really handy. Other times it's not. So if you don't want that to disappear, when you click on your pencil color, choose the word fade, click it, and it'll say no fade and then that drawing will not fade away anymore. When I'm finished I'm just going to click stop recording and I'm given the opportunity to hear it again. You probably are not hearing this because I currently have headphones in but it is playing back and I do hear everything that I did. So let me skip forward a little bit so that you can see what this looks like. And so this is where I'm getting ready to draw. And so now you can see how the drawing ends up appearing and where it appears in the lecture. All right, if I hate this, I can click cancel and I can re-record this from scratch, just this one slide. But if I like it, I'll hit save. And now you see over here is the avatar that I've chosen for myself and my audio voiceover. So let's say, for instance, that I forgot something and I was like, oh, I really should have said this one last thing. Instead of re-recording the whole thing, I can click plus again and the microphone. And now when I talk, it's going to just be an addendum to what I did before and it's going to attach that audio file to the end. So I'll hit save and now you can see this is the little piece that I just recorded. So I now have two items. They're all stretched across. Here's the first thing I recorded, and here's the second thing I recorded. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now I want to record the next slide. So in the lower right-hand corner, I'm just going to click on the arrow. It's going to take me to the next slide, and I'm going to repeat the process. Click the plus, click the microphone, and then begin talking. You don't have to use the annotation tool. That's only for some people that might find it interesting to use. But I'll just continue to talk. And um, then when I'm done, I'll hit stop recording. 
and save. And so right there you can see that I've easily recorded two slides. And you'll just continue this way, passing through. If at any time I decide I want to go back and re-record something or delete what I've said, all I need to do is just come up here and click on the delete tool and it will delete that audio and I can start all over again. Um, remember, that is deleting the audio for that slide only. The audio will stay intact on the other slides. So pretty straightforward. I'm just going in, I'm recording. Um, I'll show you quickly what it looks like if you decide to record video. Uh, my office is a little dark right now, but you can kind of see me. So as I'm talking, you'll see that I show up in the corner up there. And um, yeah, that's about it. So well, I'll just say stop recording. And then there's me talking again, so I'll hit save. And that's the video, that's what a video comment looks like. Those are the, for faculty members, those are the top two types of commenting tools that you will use. These two right here. Students, unfortunately, unless you tell them otherwise, will almost always use the text-based. All right, so now I'm done. For the sake of argument, we're gonna say I'm finished with adding voices to all of my slides and I'm ready now to share it with my students. Let me just click this X up here and that's going to get me out of commenting. This is um, a place where people get confused because they're like, oh, I'm done commenting. How do I get out of this? Just click the X up here and that takes you out of only the commenting feature but not out of your whole creation of your voice thread. So we've done one where we added media two where we added our comments and now we're on step three which is how we're going to share this. All right there are a lot of ways to share a voice thread especially at the College of Charleston because we do have the integration with Oaks and we do have a big university-wide license. However the easiest way the very easiest way I think is to come up here to the basic tab. Choose link and then decide what restrictions you want to have on your voice thread and then choose copy link. So let's talk for a quick second about those restrictions. If I only want my students to watch my lecture, they're not going to put their own comments in at all. I really just want to use this as a delivery method for the students to maybe get a little bit of a lecture outside of class. Then just make sure that only view is selected and then click, click copy link and we'll go into Oaks and we'll paste that link and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. If you want your students to be able to comment on the voice thread, meaning putting their own responses in on this voice thread, then you'll choose comment. Now the catch is they'll have to log into voice thread in order like separately in order to be able to do this so I'm not saying don't do it I'm just saying that there is a little bit of an extra step if you decide to do this using our current configuration so just be aware of that but um, if you choose comment the person does have to have a voice thread account and they do have to be logged in in order to comment alright so I have view only right now so I'm just gonna uncheck comment and leave it only as view because this is just a little lecture that I want them to see outside of class and now I'm gonna click on copy link now you can use this link anywhere you want you can put it on a web page you can send it via email you can put it in the Oaks news item you can put it in the Oaks content feature it is really just a URL that you have copied and pasted and this is it right here that's what it looks like down there at the bottom and that's that's it that's all there is to it so wherever you normally would would deliver content or how you would normally deliver content you're just gonna take that link and paste it there so what I'm gonna do is come back in up here I'm, I'm just using tabs so this is my voice thread tab I'm gonna go back into Oaks and I'm gonna go into content and here I'll say new, create a link, watch lecture, and paste that address in and hit create. And that's all you need to do. And now it's going to open up inside Oaks 
and play. And that's all there is to using VoiceThread. Now, like I said, this is really just touching the tip of the iceberg. This is the basic use for VoiceThread. There's a lot of other things that it can do, and TLT offers lots of um, sessions where you can learn all the ins and outs of VoiceThread. In addition, I would recommend that you contact your instructional technologist, and we're happy to go through this whole process with you. So I hope you enjoy VoiceThread.